Hey, writers, I hope that you all have been prospering in your purpose and dominating in your destiny. Welcome to another Writing Wings episode. And in this episode, we are going to discuss defeating writer's block. There are some people that are not writing because they have this horrible thing called writer's block. Before I get started, you already know what to do. Go ahead ahead and like this video. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And also, if you want to go ahead and share this out with a family or friend that may be stagnant right now, they may feel stuck and they need some keys, drop some key emojis in the comments. They need some keys in order to get them started, in order to get them inspired and revved up to finish their writing assignment. I'll give out this disclaimer uh, while you guys are subscribing, but I will give out this disclaimer that I don't really believe in writer's block. I do believe that I believe in like fatigue, but I believe that if you are a, a scribe, if you are a gifted writer, that you can write at any moment. Obviously there are times where you do need to take a rest because you've been overusing your gift or you've been writing a lot. And so there are times that you have to, but I feel like some people, they, they have, they feel like they have to have some, some sort of feeling. They have to have some sort of thing come on them or some sort of inspiration before they even start at all. But the reality is I'll tell you this, that the first way to defeat writer's block is to really let things flow. One of the reasons why you can get stuck in a writing assignment is because you are trying to look for the perfect words or you're like, eh, I don't know if this is really going to fit. And because you are in your head, you're allowing your mindset, you're allowing the, the conversations in your mind to distract you and cause you not to start writing. And so one of the things that I've learned about writer's block, or I've learned even through my own self where I have not written something is because I was really being a perfectionist. And number one, you really should just let it flow because sometimes when you don't have all of the answers, because I'm super organized when it comes to writing, I want things to go like this linear. And then when I get to certain parts of the assignment where it's like, eh, it's not feeling very linear. It's not feeling, it's not coming to me very easy. One of the strategies that I now use is let it flow. I just begin to just type out whatever comes out of me, whatever comes out of my spirit. And then if it, I go back later and then I go back and I clean it up later. And so sometimes we're waiting for a perfect moment. We're waiting for something to be super organized, super detailed, and that does not happen all the time. And so when those things happen, just begin to just cause things to flow, just write whatever just pops up in your mind and then go back and fix it, go back and organize it and make it make sense later. So just let it flow is number one. The second thing to do when you are feeling stuck, when you are feeling like, man, overwhelmed, one of the things that I tell people is that you need to change your environment. Maybe go to a coffee shop, go around people, go around environments where other people are highly product uh, or highly uh, productive. Go around those individuals and you're going to be able to feel like, man, I can finish this project. Or I feel like, man, everyone else around me is working. This used to happen to me in college where I would not want to write something. And I would, I wouldn't want to write my paper. I didn't want to do any of my work. And then my friend would be like, we're going to the library. Cause she was like a bio major or yeah, bio major or something. And so she had, she was like, no, I have to do my work. And I'd be like, no, I just want to relax. And I would go to the library with her everyone else is doing work. So I'm like, you know what? I have to do my work too. Or even if you are in a, an environment where you're like, okay, I've been working so hard. Then another way to just spark some inspiration or to get out of a, a space, a headspace where you feel blocked is maybe just go ahead and take a walk. Maybe go get some, some sun on on your face. I've seen it happen where I've just been indoors for way too long. And then I just don't feel inspired anymore because I've been clogged up in a room or clogged up in an environment all day long. And now it's like, okay, go get fresh air, go, go take a walk, go for a run, go let the sun sit on your face, go to a different environment, switch it up. That's the second thing that you need to do. The next thing that you need to do and think about one of the reasons or one of the ways that I've seen a lot of my students, a lot of my former students not finish their book is because they have not healed. So I want you to type in the comments, heal. One of the reasons why they don't feel like writing anymore, it's really not a matter of not having enough creativity or enough skill. And even it's not even that you don't have enough to say, you have too much to say. And now you're feeling stuck because you're like, I don't know if I should write that. So then you freeze and you don't write anything because you maybe you're trying to navigate a tough moment. So I tell people that if 
this is the case, then you need to heal. If you are suffering from depression or you are suffering from uh, anguish, deep sorrow, then you do need to heal. But also too, some people just decide not to write because they're afraid or yeah, they're afraid of what their family members are going to think about them for writing this. They're afraid of what their mom, their dad, their their family, their brothers or sisters. They're afraid of what their coworkers are going to say about them. And because you are in that headspace, because you have those voices in your head and you haven't successfully navigated and trumped those voices and said, I'm going forward no matter what, now you're freezing when you should be flowing. And so you need to begin to confront those voices or you need to confront the, the situation that has held you bound. And I tell people this, why we named this particular channel, Writing Wings, this section called Writing Wings is because I understand that if you let your story out, if you get out of your system, the moments of pain that you've experienced, you will receive wings, you'll receive your freedom. And in turn, you will go back and try to help someone else receive their wings or your words are going to bring healing and freedom to someone else. And so I need you to type healing through writing because if you are in a, a headspace where you're like, man, I don't want to talk about this and I'm feeling angry. One of the ways that you're going to break free from that is actually writing about it, expressing yourself through writing. You're going to do the same thing I said before in the let it flow section. After you have gotten this painful moment out and you've expressed how angry, how disappointed, how disillusioned, how despondent you were, how vexed you were, how exasperated you were. After you've expressed that, you've conveyed that in this writing, you're going to go back and clean it up and take things out that are not necessary for this writing assignment. Or you may not even need to do that because maybe you just did it on the side and then you're in the right headspace to continue your writing assignment. Because that's ultimately what happens to people is they don't confront some things head on or they're still stuck or their body has has still has that uh, that trauma still locked inside of them. And because you have that trauma still locked inside of you, now your your body is frozen and you are not creating, but you're not creating at all because you are stuck. And really, sometimes you can actually create a masterpiece. And this is if, if you study emotional intelligence and study the mood meter, uh, shout out to Dr. Mark Brackett, I believe. Who created it and you are in the blue, it says that you can create something amazing. You can create something that is life-changing. You can create something that is going to impact other people because you are tapping into a space and a, an emotion that doesn't come frequently. So I tell people to use that for their advantage, to use that painful experience or that moment or that feeling of being sad and blue, use that for your advantage and begin to create art that is going to bless other people. You know this from your own experiences, from listening to other artists. They have created certain songs. They have created certain things, certain teachings because, and it was born out of a place of what? Out of a place of brokenness. And so I don't want you to not write because you feel broken, you feel shattered. That is a beautiful place to be in because now God can overtake you and he can begin to, she can strengthen you and begin to flow through you and speak sensitively or speak directly and targeted to the people, the audience that you're called to, because now you're in a state of brokenness and you're open to receiving whatever it is that God wants to do in that moment. And so I don't want you, I want you to take advantage of that and not be in a headspace for saying, woe is me. I I'm not going to be able to do anything. No, use that for your advantage. Prosper from that painful experience and allow other people to receive power because you decided to be vulnerable in that moment. The next thing you should do is you should also practice free writing or journaling without a purpose. And so if you're like, man, I don't really feel like writing. I haven't been inspired. I would just tell you, just get a actual physical journal and begin to just start flowing with your physical journal, get a piece of paper. And it doesn't have to have any rhyme or reason to it. It's just for you to get things out of your system. It's just a spark creativity in your mind. That's what I do sometimes when I'm stuck in a chapter and I'm like, eh, I don't feel like writing anymore in this chapter. I just start talking and flowing and just writing random things. And then it gives me inspiration and actually, then I start tapping into another book, uh, which is then, which is great because then I have more information. I have more things that I need to write. I have more content for a new book. And so just take out or I get a, a writing prompt online. 
any fun writing prompts, they ask you these fun questions and respond to it. Respond to it in a first person point of view, a second person point of view, third person point of view. Spark your creativity because it's inside of you. You just need you just need some sort of boost or some sort of inspiration. And really that writing prompt is gonna be your boost. Or you can just free write or journal without any without any aim. Because sometimes when we have an aim or we have a target, it sometimes puts a lot of pressure on us. And that's when we freeze in that moment. And so get a writing prompt online that looks super fun, respond to it, or don't do that and just start flowing and journaling, just talking about your day or tell a funny story in, in through text message. Do something fun that way so that you can defeat writer's block. And the last thing I'm going to tell y'all here is you need to find inspiration from something. So I would tell you that AI is a great tool to use if you are like, man, I got to come up with some more ideas. And maybe that's why you're stuck because you ran, you feel like you ran out of ideas. And that can happen because you've been working so much. You've been using your mental capacities. You've been using your, your mind to be able to push this writing out, to push this devotional, to push this book out. And so now I'm going to, I'm going to encourage you that, Hey, if this happens, go to chat GBT, go to the different AI tools that are available free of charge online, go to them and begin to just write, Hey, I need inspiration on this type of devotional or I need inspiration. And obviously you're not going to take verbatim what it has said, but you're going to start, you're going to see some different ideas, different angles to a problem, different angles to a situation that you may have not have thought about, but you have this machine that can think for you. Go to uh, maybe read a different book and then you'll get inspiration from a different book. Maybe go to, uh, I want I, I wouldn't consume too much content if I was you, because then you're going to be stuck and I don't want you to sound like someone else but I would start with those things or go to your favorite Pinterest board, something that's going to inspire you and give you more, give you more layers to what it is that you're trying to write about. Because once you get that one word or you get that different angle, you get that, you see that whatever you're talking about is multifaceted and multi-layered. Once you get that sparked up, you will then begin to start flowing and you're, you're going to start, it's going to spark you to begin to flow and then get back into that writing assignment. I hope that, the, I hope that this helped. I hope that you're going to be able to not be stagnant whenever you feel whenever you feel like a block come up. There are tools that you can use, and I hope that you use these practical tools. You think about these different things whenever you feel stuck and you're you haven't written in two days, and you know that your deadline is coming up. You haven't written in three days, four days, five days, and your deadline's coming up, and you've been feeling uninspired. Follow these things. I want to invite you to the Unlock Your Devotional webinar that's happening at the end of June. I want you to come to it because we're going to talk about how to keep that flame going. I believe that you should be able to finish your devotional in 30 days or less. I believe that this is a type of book that is able to be finished in 30 days or less. It's in you. You've written out your journals. You've written, chances are you have old journals that has this content in it. And so I'm going to show you how to organize your thoughts in this webinar. That's in the regular part where we're going to talk about how to, the three major stages of writing a book, which is the pre-planning, the drafting, and revising stages. We're going to go over all those stages. And then if you're in the VIP session, you're going to get five hours of teaching. And in that, we're going to do an accountability writing hall where you're going to spend an hour writing in real time and receiving feedback. And if you get stuck in a place, you can ask me because I'm going to be right there coaching you. And then we're going to push past those barriers. I'm really hoping that you get at least 10 pages, five to 10 pages done within that hour. And then also too, I'm going to encourage you, if you're in the VIP, you're going to get your, unlock your devotional workbook as well that comes with VIP. You're also going to get a time where we're going to spend showing you how to get your book cover done, how to format your book so that you can actually have an ebook. And so by the time you leave VIP, you would have learned how to write your book, publish it to an ebook, and also how to market your book. We're going to go in depth on how to market your ebook, your ebook devotional book, your digital devotional. And so that you can get that in the hands of the people that you're called to, to bring awareness to the message that has been given to you. So I would love for you to join us. It's happening at the end of June. Make sure that you click the link in the description so that you can join us. We would love, love, love to have you. Let me know if you have any questions, type them in the comments. I would love to know what your devotional is about. What is your next book topic going to be about? Have you narrowed down your topic? We're going to talk about how to 
narrow down your topic and be very specific in your devotional during the webinar. So make sure that you're coming. So just to recap about defeating writer's block, if you feel empowered and feel confident about stepping into your next writing assignment, I want you to type in the comments, hashtag confidence. You're going to let it flow. You're not going to look for perfectionism. You're just going to let it flow out of your system if you feel blocked. And you're like, eh, I don't know if this is going to sound right. It doesn't matter. Just get it out. And whatever happens, happens in that moment. Go back later and clean it up. Number two, you're going to change the environment that you're in, whether this means going to a coffee shop, whether this means going to the library, maybe taking a walk. You're going to make that decision. What is it that you need? Do you need fresh air? Do you do you need sun? Do you need water? What do you need? Change up your environment for that. The next thing is you're going to heal. Maybe you're going to get I, need, I needed to mention this. Maybe you're going to get some friends to pray with you, to encourage you. Maybe you're going to look at some encouraging words. What are some prophetic things that people have said to you? What are some encouraging things people said to you about you writing this book? You're going to go back and read those things. You are prob If you need to go to therapy, if it's really, if it's really getting bad, you're going to go speak to someone, a, a professional, so that you can go through these mental blocks successfully. You're going to do a free write that's the fourth thing you're going to free write. You're going to journal. You're not going to look, you're not aiming for anything in particular. It's just something creative to do so that your mind can start working and uh, you can get inspiration and you can get lit up through just free writing because maybe you're so, you've been so stuck in one style for too long and now it's being, it's boring for you. So now you need to switch up your style and take the chance in this free write. The next thing that you're going to do is you are going to get some inspiration from AI. You're going to go to Pinterest. Use AI as a tool to find inspiration. You're not going to use AI. You're not going to use other people's things as, as you taking it as plagiarism, but you're going to use it for inspiration to get ideas, to spark up ideas, to spark up topics that maybe you did not discuss, or maybe you, you just didn't think of in the moment because you've been working your mind for so long. And so now you've typed in chat GBT, you've typed into different AI engines or AI software, you've typed in a prompt and it's been giving you, it's been pumping out ideas that are typical to that particular subject matter that you're talking about. All right. I hope that this helps. If this helped, make sure that you click that like button on this video and make sure that you subscribe and also make sure that you share this with a family or friend. And also the big thing here, make sure that you are part of our workshop, our webinar that's happening at the end of June. We would love, love, love for you to be with us live in that webinar. We're going to be live in a room together with other writers from all over the world. And so we're going to, you're going to get that time with me. I'm going to be able to see you. You're going to see me and we're going to talk and I'm going to give you practical keys. I need you to drop some keys, some key emojis. I'm going to give you some practical keys to unlock your devotional. All right. I hope that this helps. And I hope that you all are going to continue to build a great legacy. I am going to build iconic dreams with you all later and love you like a leader. See you in the next video.